We in here, man. Come on up in here. Yeah, we in here. Come up in here and fellowship. Make sure you come in and greet one another. Come on in here, man. Don't take too much time. Hold on, let me look. Yeah, I know it's 4.35 EST time in the morning. You know what I'm saying out here in this Mississauga, man. I know you West Coast people. You know what I mean? Y'all, uh, matter of fact, yeah, y'all on good P&H hours out there. So I know y'all should be up. So even though I'm early on my side, because I got a cool little West Coast population that's still watching, you know what I mean? Y'all should be up. You know what I mean? Come in hitting the like button. Come in greeting one another. Y'all already know what it is, man. Come on up in here. Don't play no games. Y'all see uh, Matt Kelby, man. You know what I'm saying? We're two down, man. Don't play with him. <laughs> you know, matter of fact, let me make sure my let me make sure mine ain't watching, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, Matt Kelby might knock me, man. I might get that call, man. You know, I might get that call, man. You know what I'm talking about? You know, he might jump on the phone. Yeah, man, you know, uh, Orange County where they found me, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, you know, mashing mashing with a passion, man. And, you know what I'm saying, mashing on these bitches till there's nothing left. And keeping these bitches working, man. You know what I mean? On the crystal meth, you know what I mean? The greatest since Larry Bird, you heard? Yeah. I know you thought I looked like Bud from Married with Children, you know, but I'm really just pimping, though, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, Matt, Matt Calby for the record, though, man. You know? Yeah, man, fuck what you heard. Yeah, I heard what you were saying, saying, and it ain't right. Yeah, because the pimp, you understand me, capabilities and ministries even go to the white, man, you know? <laughs> he might pop it on me one time. I don't know, man. You know, he might pop it. Get up in here, man. Let's fellowship. Oh, and you already know, we just up in this Mississauga, man. And as you know, this game is brought to you by the game and Fiji water. Yeah, it's just that Fiji water, man. You know, but uh, let me see. We got over 200 people. We can kick it off, but look, man, get, make the likes look like the viewers before we start. Y'all see, don't play with me. Y'all see this man's attire. Y'all sitting over here making jokes like y'all don't want to choose. You know what I mean? Kelpie, you, you see Kelpie around here really mashing with a passion. You could tell by his motherfucking attire that he really getting his desire. You know what I'm saying? Out of the bitch, man. <laughs> Balance, what's happening, man? <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on, let me do this right quick so I can see the comments. I know y'all think I'm about to just be screaming and hollering, but I really thought this was this, like, I needed this. Laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is good. Touch somebody and say, laughter is good for the soul. Shout out to the uh, homie Terry, man, with the five. Coming out that Cali, you know, appreciate that. But yeah, we got enough people, man. Let's let's start this classic. Come on, let's go. All right, Kelpie and Ashley and Chris. Crystal. Is it not Kelby? Mac Kelby. Get it right, Mark. Michael's right here. Crystal on the left. Ashley on the right. What's happening? I'll try to remember these names. Um, so where, where are you guys all from? You're, you're from Orange County? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're kind of all around. Like, I'm from Southern Orange County, but I kind of bounced around Central Orange County and just, like, you know, moved around my whole life. Um, and you're from, she's from Seattle, but kind of, like, you know, same thing, bounced around Southern Cali. Um, yeah. and same with her, honestly. All over Cali. And how'd you guys end up in this lifestyle? Um, that's actually kind of an interesting story. Like, I kind of say they found me. Like, we always used to kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. You know how we used to say back in school, heck you know. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute, man. Yeah, man. You know, I think they found me, man. You know? Yeah, he been, watch 
He been watching them interviews, man. He been watching Freeze is it. He been watching too much. He been watching too much Sharp. He been watching too much K Red. He been watching too much, man. You know, yeah, man. The game just found me, man. You know what I'm saying? So, so when did you, you know, choose to participate in a lot? Yeah, you know, I never really chose. You know what I mean? The game chose me, man. You know what I'm saying? I never found these hoes. These hoes found me, man. <laughs> Oh my God, laughter is good for the soul. And why, listen, I'm going to keep it real. Only reason why it's even more funny is because of the color of his skin. But guess what? I know niggas in the game that's just like him. I know niggas in the game that used to dress just like this. Appreciate, appreciate the five. I'm not even going to say this one dude's name. Because for the longest, man, we went years without even seeing this nigga with a bitch. He born and raised Vegas. I'm not going to go into it. He be lying, telling people he from the Bay. But he born and raised Vegas. He used to dress just like this. I just got to be all the way 100. He used to dress. The moment that I even seen this Jerry Springer uh, kick. Because this is the Jerry Springer uh, shit. Now we have, we're going to bring out Tornado the Pimp. Then Tornado come out with two little trailer trash bitches that look like they born and raised, you know, from Louisville and shit. And, you know, he come out with this type of get up. This is the Jerry Springer get up. This is the 90s Jerry Springer get up. And he wearing it in 2022 with the Odyssey Fun World chain. You know what I mean? And see the bitch with the red on, she looked she, she don't look like her, but she got the same spirit as the old girl from American Pimp. Well, I haven't met, I haven't been around him. I haven't known him for too long, but I like him. <laughs> she got that same spirit. I ain't been knowing him too long, but you know, I like him. All right, hold on, let's get into it. God, it's going to take me a while to finish this. About it, talk about it like, oh, we could do this to get some money and things like that. We never actually took it seriously. Um, but about two years ago, I kind of just started, you know, dipping my foot in the game, kind of like figuring out. the. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Even though this is 22 minutes, I'm not trying to make this 22 years. I can't help it. Lord, I can't help it. It used to be a song back in the day. I can't help it. Why that man said his feet wet in the game. You know what I'm saying? He been watching all the pimp documentary. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? I got my feet wet. You know, uh, it had to be the year, you know what I mean, of 92. Yeah, he been watching all the pimp interviews, all the pimp videos. Yeah, you know, when I got my feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, you know, I had a few little girlfriends and things. You know, they had some potential, but I was green at the time. I didn't know what to do. I didn't get my feet wet till about, mm, about 96-ish. I got my feet wet in this game. <laughs> he been watching this nigga, this, this motherfucker done seen Pimps Up, Hoes Down. He done seen American Pimp. He done seen Cross Country 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He seen the ones that we didn't even know about. He been watching them, man. He said, my feet wet. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't even speak. There we go. Bitch trying to get out of bounds. All right. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It just looked like a Boulder Highway special. Some stuff like that. And then they were kind of short for money. And I was like, you know, there's some ways we can get some bread. You guys were in the streets before this happened? Yeah, yeah. I know a way we could get some bread. Uh, you know, like, this shit killing me. Hold on, man. Let me turn this off. Uh, you know, I know a way we can get some bread. Hold on. Don't you know a way, Kelpie, that they all get some bread? I mean, we're actually currently, we're homeless. Yeah. So um, I kind of just told him, like, yo. Wait a minute. 
Hold on. Let's go back. Let's go back, son. Figuring out the ropes and stuff like that. And then they were kind of short for money. And I was like, you know, there's some ways we can get some bread. You guys were in the streets before this happened? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're actually currently, we're homeless. Yeah. So um, I kind of just told them. Now, I'm going to say this. Because, you know, Sin had to bring it because no disrespect to nobody else. But, you know, when Sin bring it, he bring it. You know, so let me break it down. Uh, so it can eternally be broken. Uh, now, I could give you something comical, but I'm going to give you something realistic. And the realistic is this. First of all, he's 19. We know that he's not a real pimp. We know he's a jester. But at the same particular time, I didn't know why everybody just thought this was so hilarious that he's homeless when just about damn near all of the guys, that's, that most of the guys that's professing to be pimps from ages 18 to 25, a lot of y'all know y'all hotel living. So I, I couldn't understand. It was just too many hotel people that been living in hotels for years laughing. Wait a minute, you homeless too? What are you doing? <laughs> what do you mean? What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? I don't, listen, listen, listen. I didn't understand it. It was so many people roasting and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I ain't calling no name, but I seen certain stories and I'm like, wait a minute, sir, you're homeless. What are you talking about? So the only reason I guess this was funny is because of course by the color of his skin, he is a goofy, but at the same particular time, you got homeless people roasting homeless people. This is just, this ain't right, y'all. You know what I mean? You got bitches that ain't had a place since they've been in the game, been in the game for five years or more, and laughing, talking about, oh, my God, he homeless. Bitch, what are you doing? You're homeless. All these nomads laughing and making jokes. Come on, man. I just got to keep it real on all sides. You know, you saying Mike Bibby. I'm saying, like, instantly when I seen him. You got to go to the early days. He looked like Bud from Married with Children. Only reason it's a little difference because of Bud's hair. But as far as the face, if you just go look at different pictures of Bud from Married with Children, spot on. Spot on. But he do look like Mike B. Yeah, I'll give you Bibby. John Stockton, no, not John Stockton. More like Chris Styles. Chris, yeah, Chris Scott. Yeah, he got that. You know what I mean? He, yeah, he, see, if you know, if you remember the Orlando Magic, you know, I hit that right on the head. You know what I mean? I hit that right on the head. Come on. So we can get some bread. You guys can, uh, you know, your white girls. It's kind of a rare thing to see out on the streets. So we ended up just going for it. And it's a rare thing to see white bitches in the streets. What are you talking about? <clears throat> I thought you watched enough of uh, Maroy's DVDs. I thought you seen, I know you following all the pimps. I bet right now if we knew this, I knew. I know for a certain if we knew his Instagram page, he is following all the pimps. And if he's not following from his main page, he definitely has a dummy page, you know what I mean, where he's following all the pimps. So to see white girls down on Blaze getting in and out of cars, that ain't nothing new. Come on, white privilege to pee. You know, white privilege, you better than this now. Come on now. If you're going to pop it, pop it. I'm rooting for you. They against you, Kelby, but I'm, I'm for you, man. Come on. Come on. I'm, 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 I'm praying with you. Come on. Crystal, were you, were you working as sex workers at all before? The... Before we met him? Yeah. Uh, no. no. I mean, I, like... I tried to do some things on my own. I a little bit, but you know, nothing. You need a pimp. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, talk. So tell, tell me why you need a pimp. Tell me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That is the funniest part of this interview. I'm sorry. Somebody got to take this and make that into a uh for a song. You need a pimp. Wait a minute, Kelby. What you say? What you say these bitches need? As sex workers at all before the. Before we met him? Yeah. Uh, no. no. I mean, I, like, I tried to 
do some things on my own. I a little bit, but you know, nothing. You need a pimp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, Kelby. Hold on, hold on, Matt Kelby. Hold on, Matt Kelby. Let's go back. I'm sorry. I know y'all want me to crucify him, but the boy funny as hell without even trying. You need a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> hell no. Hell no. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Man, man, man. Before we met him? Yeah. Uh, no. no. I mean, I, like, I tried to do some things on my own. I a little bit, but, you know, nothing. You need a pimp. Yeah. yeah. Real talk. <laughs> so tell, tell me why you need a pimp, Copy. Wait, wait. Well, it's not just the security aspect and, like, taking care of the girls. Stop. I blame y'all. Y'all laughing, but I blame y'all. I'm going to tell you what gave birth to Kelby. What gave birth to him is constantly seeing bad representation and no representation. Pete, what you mean by that? By soft white underbelly enabling anybody and everybody that professes to be a pimp coming on the platform, it gave the courage and confidence to basically just anybody and everybody. I'm talking about motherfuckers climbing out the garbage can. I think, I'm, I, think I can do this. I think I can do this. This boy got on a... Do you not understand that he looks like a club promoter? See, if you ever lived in Vegas, you know, I just was in Vegas every night. You know, club promoters be outside of the casinos with the cars and shit. They be like, ooh, we can get you a free limo ride right to the strip club. He's dressed just like one of the club promoters. I'm not lying to you. I am not lying to you. The boy got on a golden spike chain. See, if you're not from Vegas, you wouldn't understand. The boy got on a Golden Spike hotel chain. The nigga got a Fremont Experience suit on, and he talking about you need a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Where is Kevin Samuels? You can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. You can. Get my likes up to 300. Don't play with this game like that. I know we, I know we early right now. But get the likes all the way up. The boy got a Fremont Experience suit on. And he talking about some you need to get with a pimp. Shout out to Divine. You know what I mean? I don't know. Shout out to King Difference. You know what I mean? Shout out to, I don't even see Prince, but shout out to Sepulveda Prince. Shout out to all of the pimping that's in here. Adam, what's happening with it? You know what I mean? That's my, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my player partner. You know what I mean? Adam, one of the players. Shout out to my whole YouTube YT family, man. But bad representation and no representation gave birth to him. You guys don't understand. When people seen people like C-Note, and um, I, I'm just keeping it real. No disrespect to anybody. But I just want to just show you in every film. And especially pimps up and hoes down. You know, that was just completely garbage. But, and it had some real pimps in there, but as a film, it was garbage. Um, but American Pimp, right? Take characters like C Note and RP. Rest in peace. Uh, and not saying that they wasn't. I'm just telling you what, I'm just telling you the irrefutable truth. You had individuals with dirt under their nails. Individuals with no teeth, individuals like this, you know what I mean, that would see things like that and they would get compelled, they would get inspired to basically try to do this. Because by them seeing bad representation, and I'm not, no disrespect to Dre or even the Hughes brothers for doing what they did because they just wanted to show you all levels of the game. But I just want to show you that when you show all levels of the game, you know, there's both sides to it. It's the good and the bad. And when you show bad representation, no representation, that profess to be representation, you give courage to those who don't got a capability, who don't got no identity, that don't got no 
you know, ministry with this shit at all. You give them the idea of I can do this. After seeing so many ugly guys, after seeing so many people that don't have teeth, after seeing so many drug addicts, after seeing so many individuals that can't spell their name on a smartphone, you know, getting on soft white underbelly professing to be pimps, you have individuals like him. Now they're inspired. And I'm just telling you the truth. Bad representation and no representation, which just profess to be representation, you know, this is what gives birth to a population of individuals like this. Simplicity. But it's just, I found, at least with most of the females in my life, past girls have had these girls, something about... Sir, you don't have no history. You might have had a few little... Two second, you know, uh, girlfriend that was willing to do a favor. But all of this long history, like you've been doing this from Genesis to Revelations, from the beginning to the ninth inning. Cut it out, sir. You know, stop it. Stop it. You know, but again, he has took words like for, sh for show. It, just pay attention. In the interview, he's even going he to say for show. He's been studying He's been looking at hand gestures. He's been looking at the mannerism. He's been studying the subculture of the lifestyle. And he's endeavoring to conform to it. Just wa keep watching him. He gonna say, he's going to say for show like two or three times. I was like, damn, okay. I know them little white bitches like it for show. <laughs> really though, for show. Hey ho, break yourself. For show. Managing money is kind of like, it's a, a thing they struggle with a lot. Sure. So I'm really, I pride myself in being like. Now, how many guys watch pimp and whole interviews? And after watching so many interviews, what is the constant thing? What is a repeated thing in those interviews that the women don't know how to preside over their money? Kelby is smart enough to actually watch these interviews and he's pretty much done what we call a quick study um, on the lifestyle. And now this is what you see here. He's pretty much uh, reiterating everything that he's heard within his quick study pertaining to the lifestyle. CEO-minded person. I'm really good at managing money. So I'm not taking their money. I'm good at managing money. I'm good at managing money. We're currently homeless. I have this Odyssey Fun World chain on. I can't even upgrade you and say Dave and Busters because Dave and Busters got better jewelry than that. So you definitely was at Odyssey Fun World. You definitely had to go to Chuck E. Cheese. You didn't get from Dave and Buster. Dave and Buster would have gave you better jewelry than that. You know what I mean? There are certain gas stations that will give you better jewelry than that. We're just being real. Do you know what I mean? Let's zoom in. Let's get all the way in on the jewelry. I'm here to tell you that Dave and Buster's didn't give him that. That's that Rothschild's liquor store jewelry. That's that sicko. You know, uh, but again, you said that you're a good you know, manager of money. But not only we see how you dress, but we see how your two, I'm not, can't call you the prostitute, your two, uh, I'll just say your two uh, female associates that just so happen to prostitute from time to time. Because I know that they're not out there seven days. I know they're not even out there probably half of that time. You know, you're playing. You're playing. You're playing and you're faking. And what's sad is, I, and I know you're going to end up seeing this because you're going to be putting in reactions you're going to be going through because you're a smart little guy. You're looking for people who's going to speak on you. So, okay, this is what I'm going to say to you. Son, you're playing a very dangerous game. Very dangerous game. The enemy is setting you up. The devil is setting you up, son. You're playing a very dangerous game. You are 19 years old. You're a baby. 
you playing a very dangerous game. Now, because you got that white privilege, because you are white privilege, you know what I mean? You're not looking at it as severely as, you know, the black man. No. But, you know what I mean? They'll sit up there and spank your ass, too. You know what I mean? I've seen it on the other side, too. It don't be as severe as the black man. But you can get spanked, too. And what I'm saying is, when I, 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 you know, even though everybody's going to be making jokes, criticizing and minimizing your son, but what I will say to you is, I see your potential. Not in this lifestyle, but I think that God has blessed you with a mind that you could actually, you know, generate legal dollars more than what you're doing with them by yourself, legally. I think you're smart enough to do that. You don't have to waste any more of your existence pretending to be something that you're not, son. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that because you're going to put yourself in a position and you're going to be behind them walls with individuals. You know what I mean? That this go, you're going to be the laughing stock. And you calling yourself a pimp and nines out of ten, you know what I mean? You're going to end up being somebody's hoe, somebody's girlfriend, you know what I mean, in prison, man. Don't, young, young, listen, don't put yourself in that type of position, son. You're going to end up giving up more booty than these girl, the two bitches next to you. Just being 100, you're going to end up being somebody's girlfriend. You're going to be, you, you would end up sitting over there cleaning somebody's drawers with a toothbrush, son. Because I see that same spirit in you that when that little boy, and y'all know what I'm talking about on Scary Straight, when the dude was like, he was like, that's right, get the tooth, get the brush. I want you to brush my chest hairs. Get to it now. I can see you right now under pressure. That if somebody walked up to you and told you to brush their chest hairs, you're going to start brushing, son. You're not no pimp. You're not even a man yet, son. You know what I mean? I don't want to see you in prison, man. You know what I mean? Brushing somebody's chest hairs or cleaning somebody's drawers or making a spread for your man after he finished working out. Stop playing. Faking. You faking. It's not real. But you're going to end up in a place that's real. You keep playing with this bullshit. I say to go spend it on random stuff for myself, but I'm helping them manage it so that we can put it into investments, things that are going to make us more money, things that are going to look after our health and all kinds of good stuff, not just, you know, bullshit. We're in, listen, listen, see, and I blame you niggas. I blame y'all. Y'all the reason for this bullshit. He didn't listen to so much bullshit from the bullshitters is that he's repeating the bullshit from you motherfucking bullshitters not understanding that none of this shit makes sense. You're a good manager of money, but y'all homeless and y'all look a goddamn fool. Then you went on to sit up there and say that you're going to invest in things that's going to benefit your health. And then you're about to admit that these girls are on crystal meth. Son, you did not think about none of the things that's proceeding out of your mouth, son. You need to just give your life to God. You need to just go ahead and pick up a Bible find the nearest assemblies of God, and just give yourself to God, son. Seriously, you listening to this right now. Kelvin, give your life to God, son. I'm going to make some jokes. I'm talking to them, but sincerely, son, give your life to God. Stop with this foolishness. Stop with this foolishness, son. Hey, man, the devil getting you for cheap. He getting you for cheap. Look at this, son. Son, he's getting you for cheap. Look at this chain. Look at this suit. Look at this foolishness, son. The devil getting you for cheap, son. He getting you for cheap. You know what I mean? He getting you for cheap. You know what I mean? I can just look at you. This is, come on. Now, I understand you like the attention. You like the clout that you're receiving from this. But, son, you know what I mean? Come on. Just like Slim Jesus, this is going to fade away. You're going to be talked about for two seconds. Then you're going to fade away. Then we're going to hear about you. Being in somebody's prison, being somebody's girlfriend, if you don't change your ways, son. You know what I mean? Because them white guys is not going to want to hear that you a pimp. They're not going for it. They're not going for it. Get my likes all the way up. 
Get my like. Everybody hit the like button. Take your finger and hit that damn like button. Get my likes all the way up. I'm saying too many things that need all the notifications, all the recommendations. Plus, we up early in the morning, man. Quit playing with it. All right, let's get back. See what Matt Kelby be talking about. Come on. Yeah. And you, you guys will work where? Um, I try to keep them off the blade. Um, they have worked the blade a couple. See, he just like y'all. This is why I say it's y'all fault. Y'all sitting up there laughing at him, but in all honesty, what's the difference from him than y'all? Y'all don't be having y'all hoes on the blade. Matt Kelvin said, I ain't put mine in there either. <laughs> you know what I mean? What is the difference between him and most of the guys that be on dinosaurs? Truthfully. We just seen one idiot. We seen what his destructions, I mean, instructions led to. It led to being on Kendra G show Walking up and down the street looking like the best definition of loss. What is the difference between these cats and this dude right here? Other than the color of his skin. Other than the color of his skin. What is the difference? You guys are just as game goofy, just as dumb, giving these bitches uh, all them damn destructions. Got these bitches on, uh, uh, in front of... Pfft, Cause I'm telling you now, it's already over a half a million. This is going to end up going over a million views for show. Over a million people will see this, possibly millions, possibly millions within the month, possibly. What is the difference between him and these goofball ass niggas that profess to be pimps today? He ain't keeping them on the blade. That's right. He don't believe in pimping. And you niggas don't believe in pimping either. <laughs> so y'all laughing at him, but shit. Sound like, sound like he doing the same thing y'all do. You know what I mean? He just got girlfriends that just sell pussy every now and then. Shit. I'm spot. Mostly I just try and post ads and that's cracking. Since they're white girls, people want them. So, so the internet is, your, is what you guys do yeah, mostly just ad work, posting ads on all types of different sites, magazines, and it's it's working. I don't know. I think you're Crystal, the one in the blue. You're going to see this. You know, uh, I'm going to speak life into you. I'm going to speak by faith. By faith. I speak that one of these days that your Boston baked bean head ass is going to run into some authentic representation of the game. By faith. I'm speaking by faith of this game right now. That you're going to get out of this lost situation. That you're going to get off of drugs. That you're going to leave this, this, this situation is the best definition of bullshit. And I'm speaking by faith of the game. That you're going to run into a real authentic pimp. By faith. I'm speaking. You know... Hopefully both of you, but the one in the blue, I could just tell you really don't want to, This is all you know. This is all you know. That's all. This is all you know. And because this is all you know, this is what you're involved in. But I feel it. I can discern. I can just discern right now. It's something that within you. You want better. You want better for yourself, but you just don't know. You know what I mean? You just don't know. So hopefully one day, you know what I mean? The game will bless you to have an authentic experience with a true representation of the game. So you can finally, you know what I mean, have someone to properly lace you and give you a real introduction. But not only that, but give you some real, you know, as I like to say, you know, it's good to teach and preach. But you need to be around somebody that, you know, uh, is very disciplined. Very disciplined. Motivation is good. People go, that's the regular little talk. They say, you know, motivate, motivate. No, you need to be around somebody that is disciplined. That's exemplifying discipline every day. You know, because as long as you stay on them drugs, you're going to end up being with, like, you just got to think from a logical standpoint. You with somebody that said that the feds just raided y'all, took 20,000, and the feds just raided them. This is according to his story. He's going to say it. The feds just raided them. 
And then his bright, his and his infinite wisdom, <laughs> and his wisdom, he said, you know what? Even though the feds raided us, I'm going to go to Soft White Underbelly tomorrow and do an interview, so possibly you, millions of people can see us. This is who's presiding over your life. This is who you have appointed over your life as your overseer, your leader. This is the one that's making decisions. The guy that said, you know what? We just got raided by the feds. Let's go to Soft White Underbelly. I got a bright idea. You know, I could potentially go to a correctional facility, you know what I mean, for an eternity. But guess what? Why not sit up there and take advantage, you know, of this golden opportunity to be on Mark's platform? This is who's leading your life. And let me say to you fathers of all races, this is why you have to do what's vital to the title of a father. Because, see, when you don't do what's vital to the title of a father and you're not presiding over your daughter's life, you're not active in your daughter's life, this opens the door of opportunity for your daughter to be looking at a damn fool sitting down with somebody to say they manage money very well, but currently right now we homeless. The same individual getting ready two seconds uh, from that time going to say, yeah, we making investments, you know, things that will take care of our health, but we on drugs. Come on, man. You guys got to be fathers, man. It's time to be fathers. Come on. You worry about the law? Um, I mean, no. like I said, I've been in some, some trouble. Before. I can answer that for him. No, he's not worried about the law. He's not worried about the law. Uh-uh, not at all. If the police just got through, now, of course, he put 30-inch rims on it by telling y'all the feds. I know the feds didn't bother. The feds ain't thinking about them. Because when you're making $4 by the grace of God every day and 22 cents, the feds ain't thinking about you. Now, he told y'all 20000 but my discernment is telling me $20. Yeah, my discernment is telling me $20, man. You know, a police officer sat up there and took that 20 man you know what I mean, decided to, like, hmm, should I let him keep it? Or can I go to Dunkin' Donuts with this, go get me a few jelly donuts? You know what I mean? The cops sat up there and took $20 from me, man. Ain't no fans took that. There's nothing about you, young man, that says anything about 20000 Maybe 20000 lies out your mouth, but nothing about you says 20000 From this chain, from this attire, to these dusty-ass bitches, there's nothing about this appearance right now that says anything about 20,000, sir. The scripture says in Revelations 21 and 8, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burn it with fire and brimstone. Son, don't go to hell for lying. Stop lying. Actually just got raided yesterday. But um, in terms of getting caught up with the law on this, it's not a big fear for me right now just because I kind of know the people I'm working with most of the tricks I'm kind of familiar with. Just because uh, I'm not really pimping like that. You know, I mean, they sell pussy every now and then, you know, to get, you know, take care of their drug habits and for us to get like a motel and for me to buy, you know, Value City, you know, Jerry Springer outfits. But, you know, other than that, you know what I mean? I'm not really making any money you know, doing this. So because I'm not really making any money doing this, I don't think that. And then you got to look at the fact I am white. It's not like I'm a nigger or anything like that. You know what I mean? I'm white privileged to pee. So, no, I'm not really worried about, you know, really doing time, you know what I mean, like the niggas do. No, I just want to copy off the niggas and mimic them and talk like them. But, you know, I don't think I'm going to do time like them. No, I don't have any fear. No, no, not at all. Um. Yeah, regulars. Yeah, definitely. Regulars is how we make most of our money. I mean, we will branch out sometimes, but like I said, the regulars are really consistent money and pretty much. He's letting you know that he is the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary definition of a pimp. Saying, what do you mean? Meaning that he goes outside and he t actually talks to guys, you know, like, hey, I got two girls. You know what I mean? Let me know if you need something. He does that. He actually sets up the dates. So by, by the game, hell no. But by the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, he is the definition of a pimp because he actually goes out there and hustles just like the girls, you know what I mean, and looks for clients, you know what I mean, just like, uh, just like them. 
you know what I mean, whether it be gas station at the corner store, you know what I mean, uh, a dude that looked like Cactus Jack, you know what I mean, just walking around in the motel parking lot, he's going to initiate a conversation with him and let him know that, you know, he got uh, two girls for sale. Motherfuckers looking like the nasty boys from WCW, and he having a conversation with him to see if he can uh, sell, you know what I mean, these uh, two white girls that he got. Come on. Three times weekly, sometimes bi-weekly, things of that nature. And being Caucasian, you're, 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 I think you're the first white pimp I've interviewed. Yeah, honestly, a lot of people always told me like, oh, bro, you're pimping, you're pimping all this. I'm like, you know what? I wasn't really pimping before I got into this, this game. But when I actually... You was not pimping before, and son, you're not pimping now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you wasn't pimping before. And you're definitely not pimping now. You know, yeah, you're not pimping. And you know you're not pimping. You've watched enough uh, soft white underbelly interviews to discern who's real and not. You know, you know you're not pimping, son. You know that. You know, but this is good for your attention. You wanted some attention. You wanted some clout. You know, you, you wanted to bring your two little girlfriends up here. You know what I mean? Acting like you a pimp, you know. But you know in your heart. You know in your square's heart that you're not no pimp. I'll end of the game. And even the squares know it. I just kind of like jumped off the edge and just started swimming real fast. I picked it up just like I picked up all the other uh, <laughs> activities. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You picked it up and what, Matt Kelby? Let's go back. What you say? Bless. I'm like, you know what? I wasn't really pimping before I got into this this game, but when I actually got into the game, I just kind of like jumped off the edge and just started swimming real fast. I picked it up just like I picked up all the other uh, activities that I've kind of messed around with. I just, I learned them quick. Like a fish to water, huh? I pride myself in being a very intelligent person, pretty street smart and book smart. So I kind of use that to my abilities when it comes to this game and other ones I may have dabbled in before. And man, he been watching so many of y'all, you know, say shit that, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing, you know, to the point where he think he can just say any goddamn thing. I don't blame him. Like I said, this is a result of bad representation and really no representation, false representation, professing to be authentic representation coming up on these platforms in front of these kids. And now you have individuals you know what I mean? Like this sweet little young man, excuse me, this sweet little young male, you know what I mean? Not think that he can actually do this because he done seen all you dusty ass niggas, you know what I mean? Who don't got no teeth in your mouth, dirt under your nails, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't talk every two seconds. It's, you know what I'm saying? 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 You know, so after seeing so many of you guys, you give stupid individuals like this, you know, you're like, man, I can do that. I'm telling you. Drugs are part of you guys? Uh, yeah, we all, um, we're on different drugs. Um, they're using crystal meth, uh, and that just kind of, you know, helps them keep working. But they were doing that before they started working with me, um, before they were in my stick. Hold on, look, the bitch was like, oh, my God, did he just really bust me out like that? Oh my God, Kelby. Why did you tell my business like that? Look, 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 look how the bitch, look how the bitch, she gonna even say it. I'm not, she, she got that look like, oh my God, Kelby, I can't believe you said that. Guys? Uh, yeah, we all, um. Look at the bitch, in the blue. We're drugs. Um, they're using crystal meth. Uh, and that just kinda, you know, helps them keep working, but they were doing that before they started working with me. Um, before they were in my stable, they were already, Messing around with drugs. Oh my God, I can't believe it just told that. Ugh. I thought you was going to just say that we smoke weed. Oh my God, did he really just tell my family? My fucking family's going to see this. And he's already told them that I do crystal meth. Oh, oh my God, Kelby. She just got that look. Oh my God, Kelby. <laughs> um, I personally, cigarettes um, and opioids. But I really cut back on the opioids a lot, just like, you know, codeine, promethazine, and Percocet and stuff like that. But mostly just nicotine is my, my only vice. Try and stay pretty Is this sober. just a business arrangement or is there a romantic aspect to this? Um, 
Punch. I mean, I guess you could say it's a little bit of both. Like, I love both of these women. Um, I mean, we've definitely been watching pimps. He's been watching. He's been watching those interviews. He's been watching different videos, man. You can just hear it. You know, the influence is there. You know, he's mimicking what he sees. He's just like a baby. He's just a, rec he's just a tape recorder repeating what he heard. You know, he's just trying to do his best pimp impression, you know, right now. You know, but I'm here to let you know, young man, they, you can still... You can still do some time behind those walls for impersonating a pimp. You need to stop this. Do me a favor. Get my likes up. Let's touch 400 likes. We got over 700 people up in here this early in the morning, but we only got 351 likes. Man, why y'all doing the game like that? Yeah, take your nutty professor finger right now, man. Hit that motherfucking like button, man. Don't have... I shouldn't have to say that again and again. Y'all hit that like button. And make sure if you're not uh, subscribed to the channel... Make sure you click on the subscribe and the bell button. Yeah, do that immediately. Come on. Done things of like, you know, a sexual nature and things like that. But for me, the number one thing I focus on is the money. Um, and I'm sure they'll probably tell you the same thing is they're really just trying to, you know, have a better lives for themselves. See, he got his game from Martina. Shout out to Martina. He got his game right there. He get that little part right there. He got that from Martina. Well, Mark was like, uh, you know, how do you feel about love? And Martina was like, sock it to a bitch, sock it to a bitch pockets. So, <clears throat> you know, he should have he shouted out Martina with that. He should have shouted out the pimps and Martina. Yeah, but, you know, he's been, not only has he been influenced, you know, by the pimping, but, you know, he even listened to the hoe. He wanted to say that, uh, that part right there, sock it to a bitch pockets. You know, he wanted to say that part. Right there. That was the part where he wanted to get sassy, but he stayed in character. He wanted to say that. He wanted to get sassy like Martina. But yeah, you know, yeah, he was laced by the pimping and the horn. <laughs> he wanted to say that so bad. Sock it to a bitch pockets. Not in this day and age really involves money. It's like the, the ticket to freedom is what I call it. Yeah, how old are you? Um, 19 or 18. So you're all kids. Now we're young. Yeah, but... We still about our shit. We still getting this money. Like us. Hold on. Did he say it like Cardi B? We still getting this money. I can't even say this shit right. What is it? Shit money? What is it? Getting this shit money? We getting this money? Did he do the Cardi B just now? We getting this shit money? You know? Okay. He influenced by Martina and Cardi B. Okay, come on. Feds just took $20,000 from me when they raided me yesterday. But, um... We're going to make it right back, you know. Wow. And uh, Ashley and Crystal, you tell me how you guys grew up and how you, where you came from before you got into this situation. Um, I kind of grew up in the valley, like where I know. See, and yeah, I, I'm going to have to keep it real. He get that from Sharp and the rest of them. Pete, what you mean? You know, getting on there smoking. Yeah, getting on there smoking. He thinks smoking this cigarette right now. He think he cool as fuck. You cannot tell him that. Matter of fact, let me talk like a white guy right now. He's fucking badass, man. Yeah, he's fucking badass. You know? That fucking pimp, that pimped out suit that he got on and that fucking pimped out chain. He's fucking badass. That's how they talk. He's fucking badass, man. You know? Smoking his cigarette with his fucking two bitches. They're selling cock for him. They're selling their pussy. They're selling their fucking twat for him so he can live like a fucking king, man. I don't care what you guys say about him. You can hate all the fuck you want. But at the end of the fucking day, man, Kelby is sitting over there sitting with two bitches in front of millions of people, man. He's fucking badass. He's badass, man. He's badass. <laughs> oh, shit. Tell me that ain't the way they talk. He's sitting out with his fucking pimped out ass suit with two badass white bitches on Mark's platform. He's fucking badass. Yeah. And my dad lived in LA. My parents weren't together. Look how he's smoking my dad, it. An addict. Um, he doing this. 
<laughs> he doing his best sharp impression. He trying to smoke and, oh my God, bro, I can't take this shit. I can't take this shit. Oh my God. It ain't even Halloween yet. And motherfuckers is trying to be pimps. God damn. You know what I mean? Look at the way he smokes his cigarette. Everything. Hand jet. All of this shit. He's been studying. He's been studying all of the popular people of the game. Wasn't there a lot. Haven't seen him in Look at the way. Look at what. Um. <laughs> Y'all didn't even catch it. Y'all didn't even catch it. What my nigga Cameron say? You didn't even see me when I put my leg up. Hold on. Watch how he pimpishly. Look how he does his cigarette with two fingers. Oh, my God. When I tell you he's been studying black people, watch. Pay attention. That boy been studying. I kind of grew up in the Valley, like Moreno Valley, and my dad lived in L.A. My parents weren't together. My dad, an addict, <laughs> um, wasn't there a lot. Haven't seen him in many, many years. Um, grew up in a horror house. Things like that, so. A horror house or a horror house? Horror house, yeah. Horror house. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the independent mom, thing your, your is. Your mom was a hoarder? No, my grandma. Oh, your grandma. Did. Yeah, we lived with my grandma. Oh, I'm sorry, right. Yeah, and um, yeah, then made our way around California. Um, my mom found another guy and. Notice that she hasn't said anything about, again, I just have to keep that all the way 100, whether you're a pimp or square, whatever lifestyle that you live. If you have a daughter, you got some daughters, you want to be in your child's life. Because I'm not just speaking on this lifestyle, I'm speaking of all lifestyles. When you're not there to give your child directions, Somebody else will come with an uh, affection or an erection that basically now they can give your child the wrong directions to lead them to the wrong destination. That's why it's mandatory, imperative for every father to be a part of your child's life. You got to be. Come on. You see the results. You see the result. The results of your this could be your daughter sitting down with some white dude in a Jerry Springer, you know what I mean, uh, suit attire, you know what I mean, the whole, with the Odyssey Fun World chain on, talking about he pimping on your daughter. Come on, time to be fathers. Grew up in a pretty nice area, but um, I always felt like there was something missing or like, was in LA. Like, I like kind of got attached to that place. And like, I still view that as like my home. Um, and so. It's a nice city. Yeah. For sure, a nice city. Not really living. For sure. But like, um, y'all didn't even peep game. For sure. But like, privileged life. Uh, a white picket more, fence life yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it's for more sure. My style. For sure. So. I told y'all, y'all not listening. Hold on. Hold on, Kelby. What you say? Y'all not people. He sure he been studying, boy, for sure, for sure. He probably saw uh, uh, Juan One Hundred. You know what I mean? He seen Juan on there probably say sh for shit show, or for show. You know I'm telling you, man. He been studying. And so, it's a nice city. Yeah, for sure, a nice city. Not really living the like. Um, a, like privileged life, uh, white more, picket fence life yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, nah, it's for more sure. style. For sure. So, that's how I grew up. I grew up white picket fence style. Um, until I was like, I maybe twelve or thirteen, and um, my parents' divorce uh, kind of screwed all that up. M moved um, more down south, Orange County. And then after that, uh, I struggled with drugs and stuff. So I was in and out of rehab for a long time. Um, and then my parents, uh, they sent me to like an Amish type of 
Like a cold call. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> so they're, they're trying to control you or just yeah. set you on the right, right path? Yeah. Um, in the beginning, I was just, they um, put me in rehab for smoking weed or um, running away. They're like, they, uh, so they're, they're, they're very strict? Very. And you were rebellious? I didn't like to be told no. I'd say so then, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's something we all kind of got in common is that like rebellious streak. We've all kind of strayed away from society's norms in terms of not just drugs, but just the way we think. We all kind of have that different mentality from go get a nine to five, you know, hustle every day in the legal way to get minimum wage and all that. We kind of we saw more for ourselves because we knew we're special people. We saw more for ourselves. <laughs> Wait a minute, man. God damn. When I tell you, boy, this shit right here, like I said, y'all want me to holler and scream, but this shit is, it's a comedy. I don't know. This is giving, you know, my, the funniest movie in, in, to me in history is Don't Be a Menace in Soft Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. And I'm sorry. This is giving that a run for its money without even trying. This shit is funny. It's sad. You know, tragically said, but it's funny as fuck. I cannot deny. This man just sit up there and said, you know, yeah, we want it better for ourselves. And you're, but you're homeless. What are you, what are you talking about? Oh, my God. And so that's the reason we kind of dabbled in this. And once we started doing it, we realized, like, yo, this works for us. So we're sticking with it and just trying to go up from here, you know. Ashley and Crystal, you would say this, sir. And he's also he also even took that from pimp interviews. P, what you talking about? Because in the interviews, you will see that sometimes uh, when pimps are speaking or people professing to be pimps, you know, they always uh, got the it's us against the world speech. And he took the us against the world and he even got that in there. Like, if you actually look at different documentaries and interviews and things like that, you'll hear different P's, you know what I mean? You know, it's because it's us against the world. It's, it's us against society. It's us, you know what I mean? So he's, everything he has totally studied. The boy had done a quick study on the lifestyle, and he's reiterating everything that he's heard. Word for word. I'm talking about even saying for show cool to smoking a cigarette like sharp. I'm talking about God damn. You know, he just he didn't bury himself in pimps up, hose down, American pimp, cross country pimping, and all the pimp interviews that he could find on YouTube. All the tutorials, all the pimp channels. He has subscribed to all of them. He's following all of the pimps on IG, I bet. You know what I mean? He's definitely he, he from the way he sounds, he sounds like he was kind of laced by uh, big Church. Yeah, he won a Big Church. Yeah, he's definitely a fan of Big Church. You could tell that he he been studying Big Church too. You know what I mean? The boy <laughs> the boy been watching. Come on. Works for you guys? Yeah. It, yes, it's the best possible situation. It, like we all met each other at the perfect time. Yeah. You guys have been together how long? Um I don't want to say exact specifics just because of the shit going on right now, but it's been months. Yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, go into all that, but if you got common sense, you know why he didn't want to do that. He just told you his age. Then he just said what they just turned into. But then after he says what he just said, listen to this. Close to a year. And we've been friends even before that, probably like three years now. So it's not the close to a year. We've been cool, you know, for, because see, he knows that, you know what I mean, at the time when certain things was happening, that they wasn't exactly, right? You fill in the blank, you know, seeing just basically saying what he said. Do you know what I mean? They wasn't, yeah, but he was. So even though... You know, it was only a year apart. They can still, if they wanted to, they can get him on that. You know, just keeping it real. What he should have did was, you know, next question. But he went on to say, 
you know what I mean? Yeah, this has been, you know, for a year and woo, woo, woo. God damn, I thought you said you didn't want to talk about it, but then you went and talked about it. God damn. But you said you smart. Yeah, it's time to give your life to God, son. It's time to give your life to God. The boy just said he don't want to talk about it. Then he went on to talk about it. Yeah, it's time to give your life to God. It's time to get that CDL. It's time to start driving trucks. Come on. Oh, abusive Tim. Nah, definitely not. You know what? With girls that I've had in the past, um, if they get a little bit of a really strong-minded uh, rebellion, then I have I have checked a girl or two in my past, but kind of learned from that. Oh, know? my God. Don't tell me Matt Kelby got a strong, he got a strong goon hand. Well, you professing to be this. We know you're not a pimping, but just for comedy's sake, you know, his pimp hand is strong. You know, he's now, that part, he's getting from K-Red. You know, he took that part from K-Pim. Sam, what you mean by that? He's thinking about that time, you know, when K-Red probably was sitting down with Martina and K-Red was like, uh, you know, I ain't going to lie. You know, I, you know, I didn't put my foot up in a bitch ass and woo, 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 woo. So, again, he's mimicking what he has heard. He's mimicking what he has heard. He has studied all the pimp interviews. He is trying to even smoke his cigarette very pimpishly. He's been in the mirror practicing for three weeks on how to say for show. You know, and he's perfecting his for show. He is endeavoring to go you know what I mean? To, to learn how to talk like a nigga university. And he's endeavoring to get his associates right now. You know, but I'll tell you, the boy been in the mirror studying, practicing his for show. Well, a pimping style just doesn't work. Um, I'd much rather, you know, just get them to do what I want with my mouth with rather my than mouth. You know, slapping them around and shit like that because... At the end of the day, that's not good for nobody. They're not going to want to go work if I'm beating on them. They're not going to look good if I'm beating on them, giving them black eyes and things like that. So, yeah, I just kind of tell them, like, yo, this is what I expect from you guys. This is what I want from you guys. A lot of times they go above and beyond. You know, if they're not doing exactly what I want, you know, I kind of give them some motivation to do it. And, yeah, that's, that's my main job other than managing the money and keeping them safe is to just be that motivator in their life that they both need, that we all need, honestly. There we all yeah, need. Role is like their manager, you're their security guard, you're their everything like that. Yeah, I mean, there's been times. Now he's been watching the Mac. I'm gonna be your father. I'm gonna be your mother, your sister, your brother. I'm gonna be everything to you, baby. <laughs> like you know, he's everywhere. I mean, I've told you, man. Matt Kelby been studying and watching, man. He been paying attention to all of the movies, all of the films. I'm gonna be, I'm her mother, director, inspector, protector. I am her encourager, motivator, fornicator. And when she's low, I'm her elevator. I am Matt Kelby. <laughs> like, if you don't knock it the fuck off. If you don't knock it the fuck off, man, come on. And we've had tricks that are, you know, most of them are unpredictable, but some that kind of just freak me out a little bit and I think it makes them have a little bit more peace of mind when I'm there, you know, you know, just in a defensive way, kind of able to intervene if anything bad were to happen. Have you guys had incidents yet? Um, we've had a few people try and short us on money, but we always made sure we got that right back. And, um, you know, we've had people intentionally like, you know, try and stay longer above their time limit of the date and things like that. But we kind of just shut that shit down and, you know, get them out of that situation and usually move on from that trick and just find a new one. Hold on. Hold on. What are these? What are these? Hold on. Just made sure we got that right back. And, um, you know, we've had people intentionally, like, you know, try and stay longer above their time limit of the date and things like that. But we kind of just shut that shit down and, you know, get them. Hold on. What are they? Hold on. No. No, no, you did not come to Mark's interview with the Jodeci Boots. It's been an hour since you've been gone. And that's too long. So come back home. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no, she came with the baby, I'm begging, baby, I'm begging. Baby. <laughs> she came with the Jonasy boobs. Oh no. Yes, she came with the Jodeci boots. Oh, my God. The bitch got on them. Take my money. <laughs> oh, shit. What your boy got on? You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. Yeah, man. Yeah, the feds definitely didn't take no 20000 from y'all. Somebody lied. Somebody lied. <laughs> Somebody lied. Somebody lied, man. Got on them Arizona shoes from J.C. Penney's, man. If you don't knock it off, if you don't knock it off, some of y'all forgot about them Arizonas. Them them Arizona shoes, man. That's them. That's what the motherfucking actors from Dawson Creek used to wear. That's them Arizona shoes. See, y'all don't know nothing about Blossom outfits. That's them Blossom shoes. See you. I'm showing my age right now. You know what I mean? That's, she dressed just like Blossom. You know what I mean? I don't know what your boy got on. I don't know what your boy got on. He a white boy and he came to the interview with some Danny Manny's on. I don't know what, I don't know what your boy got on. Your boy got on some D Browns. Your boy got on some Stacey Augments. Your boy got on some motherfucking uh, Strickland Rods. You know what I mean? Like, it's looking bad. It's looking bad around here, man. Somebody lied to us, talking about 20000 No, nah, you ain't sit up there, you understand me, and get no motherfucking 20 They didn't take no 20000 20000 where? 20000 where? Come on, man. If you don't knock it off. That situation and usually move on from that trick and just find a new one. So a couple of your style seems to be a little bit of a throwback to like the 80s. I'm 100% 90s old school in every way, 70s. in the way I think, the way I dress, the music I listen to. Because the old school is the best school. What? The old school is the best school. He's been watching interviews. The old school is the new school. This new school where these guys are just beating all the girls up. You know what I mean? It's not cool, man. It's not cool, you know? Hold on, let me see. Let me see if I can. Ah, uh, it's not letting me. Hold on, let me see something. Let me see if I can. Man, the bitch gonna have to show me that with the computer. You know, sin don't even be on the laptop as much. You can ask anybody I need to start around having here them. and they'll probably tell you like, Oh, the old school, you know, they were doing this wrong and this wrong. Old school works. This new bullshit going around of people, you know, beating on their girls because they think that's old school and, you know, just putting them out there, busting cheap dates, all that type of shit. It don't work. Busting cheap dates? Sir, you did not just say that. You did not just say cheap dates. No, you didn't say no cheap dates. You didn't do that. No, you didn't do that, man. I can't. You know what? You know what's fucked up? It's usually I, you know how people be like, oh, that's from Burlington. Oh, that's from Walmart. Oh, that's Value City. But if I said that, I would have to apologize to those stores. Because what he has on is not even good enough for that. They actually have better suits at Walmart. They have better suits at Burlington Co. Factory. They have better suits at Value City. They have better suits than that at certain gas stations in certain locations. They do. There's certain, listen, man, it's some suits in the thrift store. They're shitting on this. You could go in the thrift store right now and you will find you a suit that is totally shitting on this right now. How dare him say cheap dates? I know for certain that, you know what I mean, just looking at them, and especially by them being on drugs, I'm just keeping it all the way real. It's definitely some bareback uh, bear going on. Yeah, I, I'm just calling it like I see it. I could, you know, ain't no, he could, because he might say one thing out of his mouth, but you got to understand, when you're dealing with bitches that's on drugs, and a white boy that's trying to be something that he not. It's definitely some unprotected sex going on. And I pray and I hope that the mercies of God 
shield these two young girls while they sitting over there doing whatever they think that they doing and shield them from sexually transmitted incurable diseases. Because you got to understand when you on drugs, you're not going to convince me that you fucking with crystal meth and you haven't protected sex on every day. I'm not going. Yeah, I'm seeing not going. The ING for my PIMP stand for I'm not going. Yeah, I'm not going. You on meth, but a trick can't sit up there and get that Greek and sit up there and fuck you in the ass without a condom. I'm not going. Whenever there is crystal meth involved, unprotected sex is definitely going on. You can't tell me that you do crystal meth, but you got standards. I'm sorry, I can't buy that. It's not believable. You know, there's no standards. They have no standards. There's nothing going on here, man. I'm telling you, man. Tricks probably be coming in these girls' mouths. I know y'all don't want to hear, but I'm just telling you the absolute incontestable truth. Tricks are definitely coming on. Tricks are definitely putting nut graffiti on these girls. These tricks are getting away with murder. See, because number one, they not being laced by a pimp. So they don't have no game. See, game is your defense mechanism. Game is your shield. Game will protect you. But by them not having game, they're open prey. It's kind of remind me of the scripture in, uh, I believe, Proverbs. You know, man that has no rule over his spirit is like a, a city broken down without no walls. In other words, you know, when you don't have no protection, when you don't have a defense mechanism, when you don't have a shield, when you don't have protection around, any demonic, satanic spirit can come in. And, you know, them girls is off the influence of crystal meth. He listen to what he said. He said the meth helps them work. So that means that, you know, while they under the influence of meth, the tricks is just having a boss time. The tricks are just having a good time. The trick that what does that mean? Whenever a bitch on crystal meth, that means the trick can give the bitch what he want to give the bitch. That's why you see in the clothes that you see right now. Because the tricks is giving the bitch what they want to give him instead of a motherfucking hoe seducing and reducing the trick for everything that he got. So, yeah, the tricks is having a, a great time with these two bitches. Why? Because ain't no game. Ain't no standards. All type of unprotected sex going on. They getting, uh, you know, a uh, uh, bare head. You know what I mean? Yeah. I see all of that. Definitely going on. Come on. It might work for you, but it's not going to work in terms of the relationship with the girls. That's why you see them constantly switching hoes back and forth, because the girls aren't going to want to be out there not feeling loved, you know, just having to do this every single minute of every day. You, know, you got to leave time for relaxation, leave time for fun. Son, you talking about not feeling love. There's no such thing. Love don't even exist when crystal meth is involved. Love don't even exist when crystal meth is involved, son. You, you, you pretty much giving them death. You letting them put death in their body. What you mean, love? Love don't even exist with crystal meth being involved. You allowing them to put death in their body, destruction in their body. So how could you profess to love these girls? Come on, man, knock it off. You're not even listening to what you're saying. You smarter than this, Kelby. Come on. And I know you're going to hear everything that I'm saying to you, but yeah, man, you, you're, not, you're not listening at all. I know you looked at all of the other idiots on soft white underbelly profess to be pimps, and they just saying anything and everything out their mouth, and you pretty much doing the same goddamn thing. And that's what Mark does. He allows individuals to just get up and profess to be pimps. I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with y'all. About 85% of the motherfuckers that came up on Mark platform Talking about some they pimps, they lying. I might be doing too little with that 85, really 90. And most definitely got to stay fly. Um, there are tennis shoe pimps down in Orange County? Oh, uh, you know what? Honestly, in Orange County, I've, I've met a few pimps and they're all just gangbangers. Right. They don't even, like, you could call them tennis shoe pimps for sure. But they're mostly just, um, you know, Chicanos, uh, Cholo gangbangers. And they just find a 
you know, they realize prostitution is a way to make money. So they kind of. That boy looking just like, I don't know who that dude is now, but you know who what I'm talking about was like, you know what I mean? Yesterday I didn't have time, but today I got time because this is where this little boy, see, just, I knew it was going to go downhill. I knew it was going to go downhill from that video. That's that little boy. The same little boy that was in that video that said, today I got time because this is him. See, y'all should have been praying for him and witnessing to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, now we have allowed today I got time because to evolve into an individual that thinks that he can participate and accumulate in this lifestyle. This is the same young boy. It just dawned on me. It just came to me just now. This is the same little boy that said, today I got time because, you know what I mean? This is him right now. My God. Super Trap was tripping. Appreciate that five, these five. Good looking. Today I got time because this is him. Why y'all wasn't praying? Y'all should have been fasting. Y'all should have been preaching to him. You knew that he was a troubled little boy even back then. And so now, today I got time because has evolved into an Odyssey fun world, jewelry wearing, you understand me, uh, supreme Dada shoe wearing ass Nick. I mean, it's, it's looking bad. You know, it's looking bad, man. I blame y'all. Y'all should have been praying. Don't try to, nope, don't cry now. Don't cry now. It was so hard for time. Yeah, but it ain't, it ain't a real pimp in my opinion. Right. A real pimp's got to. Mark be trying to act so hip. By using the word hoe hustler that he got from a hoe. He'd been constantly just using it and using it. Bless his heart. I love for his girls. He's got to have respect for his girls. He's got to earn it and demand it. But he's going to get it either way. And it's got to be a good mix of both. You can't just be beating on your girls. See, this is what I mean. You've been watching so many of them guys talk on soft white underbelly. And they got you sounding stupid. A pimp ain't going to get it any kind of way. Listen to what you just said. So you've been listening to them damn idiots getting on soft white underbelly talking about this pimping and you, and you sitting up there repeating they dumb ass shit from all them dumb ass motherfuckers you've been listening to. Now watch this. Yeah, but it ain't it ain't a real pimp in my opinion. Right. A real pimp's got to have love for his girls. He's got to have respect for his girls. He's got to earn it and demand it. But he's going to get it either way, and it's got to be a good mix of both. You can't just be beating on your girls, demanding respect. He's going to get it either way. No, so he's going to get it by the game. He going to... See, I, I, see, this is what I mean, man. He just repeating what you damn idiots that got up here and you talking, you know what I mean, earning and demanding. Man, he's he listening to y'all, and y'all got this little kid on here, man, just trying to repeat y'all shit. God damn it. And he even tried to say it like them, too. He's going to earn it and demand it. I mean, I know he's been practicing in the mirror. You know what I mean? I thought even when he did the either way, I'm thinking that he talking about some, you know what I mean, whether it be the spoon or whether it be basically out of whole ass, but he talking about the respect. But no, you know what I mean? A pimp going to sit up there. First of all, before you're a pimp, what? You're a what? Y'all probably two minutes behind. You know what I mean? A lag in behind. You know, you should have been responding in the comment section immediately. Some of y'all need to tap out and tap back in. But before you're a pimp, you're a man. You're a man. That's above every title. The man title. You know, and I'm telling you now, when them girls evolve a uh, little Kelby and they finally, you know what I mean, they not high. The little two seconds when they not high and when them when the spirit of God is ministering to, you know, one of them or both of them, you know, concerning, you know what I mean? Like, damn, you know, he really just hustling us. He don't love me. this boy just repeating everything from a, a damn Kenny Red video, a sharp video. You know, he's saying things that he's seen from this guy and that guy. Oh, man, I'm really with an actor. I'm really with a guy that's, watch what I tell you, over time it's going to be like, damn, I've been selling pussy here and there for this guy, and we in this little motel, and you know, this ain't led to nothing. This motherfucker don't love me, we don't love each other. I'm telling you, 
He not even no man. Hold on. Get knocked back to the picket fence. No, it ain't going to be back to the picket fence. By then, you know, he going to be looking for his next dummy. Because I ain't going to lie. You got to be a dumbass bitch to be involved uh, with young Lil Kelby. Because he didn't already let you know he don't know what the fuck he talking about. One end, you know what I mean, is he know how to manage money, but we homeless. You know, uh, another end, he investing in things to make them healthy, but they on drugs. Like, Kelby don't know what he talking about, man. He just like y'all niggas, man. He just be talking and be talking. Because that ain't respect at the end of the day. That's fake. And so I'm just really big. My whole life thing is keep... Hold on. Let me go back. I don't want to miss this this game Kelby dropping. Hold on. So they kind of get into yeah, it. Like that. Yeah, but it ain't, it ain't a real pimp in my opinion. Right. A real pimp's got to have love for his girls. He's got to have respect for his girls. He's got to earn it and demand it. But he's going to get it either way, and it's got to be a good mix of both. You can't just be beating on your girls, demanding respect, because that ain't respect at the end of the day. That's fake. And so I'm just really big. My whole life thing is keep it real, you know? I don't like none of the fake shoes, fake jewelry, fake clothes that all these people be wearing out there, especially the pimps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Lord, man. This is pure comedy. You can't even be, man, this is pure comedy. If you ever, look, if you ever basically going through something, you having a bad day, you struggling to laugh, you could just watch this interview. Now, this boy got on the Odyssey Fun World chain. He got on the same chain that, you know, when you walking out of Albertsons or we walking out of Jules and the little machine is right there, your little daughter, your little niece or your little cousin, they like, please, please, can I have some money? And I forgot what that machine is. Y'all know what I'm talking about when the little, uh, you take the little controller and you moving the little handles around to reach down amongst teddy bears and candy and fake jewelry and all of that. And I could see that he won one time. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, he won that time. He definitely got that from out of Albertsons, man. Like, <laughs> you got to knock it off, son. He tired of the fake jewelry, but he got on the Albertsons chain. Boy, you better stop. You better, you just, I feel like Eddie Murphy and Nutty Professor, man. You just go too far with the comedy, man. You too much. Because they're just basically spitting in the face of the culture and in the face of the game. And yeah, it just gives a bad name to all the other pimps out there, including myself. A lot of people like, you know, homies I've had and shit like that. Hold on. Wait a minute. Including who? that all these people be wearing out there, especially the pimps, because they're just basically spitting in the face of the culture and in the face of the game. And yeah, it just gives a bad name to all the other pimps out there, including myself. A lot of people like, you know, <laughs> homies I've had and shit like that, maybe not current homies. Oh, kinda God. Like, oh, bro, you're a terrible person. For I'm doing. sorry. I got to hear that again. I'm sorry. I need I need to laugh for my soul. I need medication for my soul. Laughter is good for the soul. He said, including himself, oh my God. Oh my God. You can't tell me that shit ain't funny. Definitely funny. Hold on for a minute. I don't know how to respond to that. Bitch, get out of po This bitch stay out of pocket, boy, I tell you. I'm talking about she don't know how to respond to that. Bitch, I wasn't even talking to you. I'm talking to the 808, 815 people that's listening to me. You could tell I don't be on the laptop like this. I don't even know how, why that shit even be coming on. How to go, all of that shit. Goddamn. Sometimes I would uh, just be on the laptop and the bitch would just come out of nowhere and just start talking and shit like that. You know, I'm an old ass nigga, man. I'm 38 going on eternity, man. I'm not used to, I'm on the computer, a bitch start talking to me and shit like that. I'm like, boy, we had grandma right, man. You know what I mean? We... We in the last days, bitch. Don't be talking to me, man. I don't, I don't fuck with you like that. Come on. Especially the pimps, because they're just basically spitting in the face of the culture and in the face of the game. And yeah, it just gives a bad name to all the other pimps out there, including myself. <laughs> a lot of people like, you know, <laughs> homies I've had and shit like homies. that. Homies. Current homies. They're kind of like, oh, bro, you're, you're a terrible person for doing all this. 
I'm like, bro, you don't know the half of it. Like, I'm not saying these girls wouldn't be where they are today without me, but I'm saying that I wouldn't be where I am today without them. And I think if I... Oh, my God. He might knock a goofy little bitch off that. You know? Uh, and some, you know, some guys is like, you know, you're, you're a terrible person, you know, for doing that. And I'm like, bro, you don't even know the half. You know, the dedication. You know, it's just like Filthy Rich said in his song. You know, dedication and loyalty is, is where you need to be. You know, and, you know, I decided one day, I was in my car and I said, hey, you know, am I going to do this? Am I going to really pimp, you know, for real? Or am I just going to like just just go hustle or something? And, you know, when I made up my mind, I said, hey, this is what the fuck I'm going to do, man. And I just been mashing for it with a passion. I've been pimping like a mad Russian, man, ever since, you know? I'm really about my pimp shit, dude. If a bitch don't have, you know what I mean, uh, my money, man, it's going to be a problem. Come on. So honestly, too. Um, and that's because I keep it old school, because I keep it the way that it should be played. This game is not something that changes as the times go on. Seems to be what people think, but it's something that needs to stay traditional because that's the way it's always worked. It's the world's oldest profession. And it needs to be played by those same rules that it was created with. And you'll make sure the girls get what they need in terms mm -hmm. of drugs and... 100%. Mm -hmm. As much as I don't like them doing the drugs, I'd much rather go buy them a nice meal than I would drugs, but they need the drugs to stay normal and to work. So, yeah, I make sure that they're getting safe drug supply and, you know, all the paraphernalia they need to consume those drugs. Is it difficult? <laughs> Wait a minute. I do everything that it needs to be done so they can consume those drugs. Like, man, stop. You, man, just keep this pimp shit out of your mouth, boy. Keep your pimp, keep this pimping out your mouth, boy. God damn. You know, I'd rather for them, you know what I mean, to eat food, but you know, my he sound like Rosebud, an American pimp. My baby been eating pampers and I got to go get them. Like, he did, you know, my bitches be needing drugs, and I got to go get them. <laughs> like, no, nigga, we don't go get drugs for these motherfucking hoes, you dumbass boy. Fuck wrong with you. God damn, boy, you keep this pimping out your goddamn mouth. Boy, I tell you, keep this pimping out your goddamn mouth, boy. And then you look like you on the cover of Trick Magazine, and you... This is how you know these bitches are just the best definition of green and stupid. With the two different personalities? Um, you know what? They're, they're pretty close friends. So a lot of times they have qualities about them that would be difficult for me to manage. But I'm a people person, so I can honestly handle that pretty well. You know, kind of please both of them, including myself. And it works out, you know? We don't have any issues with that more than normal. You're still a young man. Did you have... Any idea that one day at 19 you'd become a pimp? Um, I'm not going to say I knew that I was going to be a pimp, but I had definitely like a personality where, like I said, I'm a people person. So I was kind of always having girlfriends when I was younger. And even <laughs> if it wasn't in a romantic ass. Man, knock it off. I guarantee you, man, if we can talk to everybody that knew you in middle school, everybody that knew you in high school, man, they're going to come on one accord and say you was a dweeb, man. You wasn't having no girlfriends and shit. You didn't have your first girlfriend, man, it's the senior year. And she was one of them girls, man, you had in hiding, man. You lying. You capping. Big capping. Do you know what I mean? You trying to tell the normal little testimony, you know, for a pimp, man, that you was a ladies' man. And you know what I mean? You was casting over. You was really just doing your thing. Man, if you don't knock it off, you really should have went to a performing art school, man. You know what I mean? For being a male actress, man. You know what I mean? You're doing too much. Way too much. And not doing nothing. Come on. Like, I just felt more comfortable throughout my entire life with females than with males. So, I guess you could say that it was an idea in the back of my head. Not if, if you continue impersonating a pimp, you're going to be around a lot of guys in a minute. If you keep impersonating a pimp, if you keep... You know what I mean? Acting like something that you're not. You're going to be around a whole bunch of guys in a minute, son. You said that you like girls a lot. You like women a lot. I'm here to tell you that if you continue on in this folly, if you continue on in this foolishness, you're going to be around 
a whole bunch of men. You're going to be sharing showers with men. You're going to be in a module. You're going to be in a cell with another man. That's, that's going to be your future if you continue on with this bullshit. Good thing, but definitely there. Did you describe yourselves as hustlers? Oh, yeah. We are the number one hustlers in Orange County, for sure. I mean, pimping is my number one hustle, for sure. But in the past, I've had other hustles. Um, and I've always been doing better than my peer. And see, that's the thing. You know, after having so many con artists come on uh, the platform, many have been deceived into thinking that this lifestyle is a hustle. But at the same particular time, I can't really blame the, the babies for talking like this because we even got elderly fools that be going on, you know what I mean, just talking, you know, anything, a bunch of con mills and shit like that. So, you know, I can understand why he, he's using this type of language, you know, making the game into a hustle. And in all actuality, he is a hustler. He's prostitute hustling. You know, because I don't want to say hoe hustler because neither one of them is hoes either. Come on. I can't disrespect real hoes. Come on. Like I said, I'm making sure they're living the lives they want to live and just free of anybody telling us what to do, free of any roadblocks for the most part. So, yeah, we're definitely the biggest hustlers out there. How about emotionally for the girls? So they, they get depressed or angry, anxious, anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, when you're dealing with anybody who's addicted to substances, myself included, if I'm not having my drug that day, and same with them, if they're not having their drug that day, there's going to be a little bit of attitude, a little bit of emotion involved. But I try and just bring them up, you know, like they're both beautiful young women. I try and just reinforce that they need to love themselves just as much as other people around them love them. And for the most... You need to love yourself. I'm going to help you kill yourself. But you need to love yourself. You need to love yourself, but I'm going to hate you. Help, I'm going to help you hate yourself by helping you get to some destruction. I'm going to tell you to love yourself, but I'm going to help you consume destructions every day. Come on, son. Make it make sense. Works. I mean, we all got our mental issues that we struggle with, whether it's, you know, actual mental illnesses or chemical imbalances or whatever bullshit you want to say, but we're just people, you know? We got those types of those types of problems, but we make do with it and we work it out. What are your relationships like with your families? Um, well, I'm gonna let them tell their own stories because I try not to, I don't like to talk bad about their families and both of their families oftentimes piss me off. But as far as my family goes, <laughs> um, I had a, a decent upbringing. Um, my family was kind of, like like hers, very strict, very controlling. Um, and my dad kind of just allowed himself to get bitched around by my mom a lot. And they were always fighting and, you know, beating on me and shit like that. So I'm not going to say it was the greatest upbringing, but. Mm. So you seen your father get ordered around. He seen his father follow instructions. He seen his father you know what I mean, get disrespected and neglected. He's seen his father accept and tolerate disrespect. So what do you think that did to this young boy's mind when he seen bold, outspoken, you know, black men, you know, this black man that's the embodiment of power, the embodiment of boldness, that has dominion over women. You know, what do you think that done to his mind after seeing his father constantly being disrespected all the time and to finally see a man, you know, talking to women, giving them instructions, telling them to do this, doing that, you know what I mean, not accepting disrespect. See, it makes sense. All you got to do is listen. Oh no. Just like any young boy that see a weak male in the home, when he finally see a man exemplifying, you know what I mean, what a man is, you know, uh, ruling things, presiding over, giving instructions and things like that to women or even to men, everybody respect them, look up to him. He going to say, I don't want to be like my dad. Why? Because my dad's a bitch. He listens. He allows a bitch to disrespect him. 
So I can only imagine his mind being blown away seeing black men control their women, preside over their women with all dominion, all power. You know, if the bitch don't respect me, she can't be around me, not tolerate no disrespect or neglect towards my instructions. By that being the mentality of the black men that participate in the lifestyle of pimping and horn, you can see why he would gravitate to the lifestyle because it was everything that was contrary to what he was used to seeing in his home. He wasn't used to seeing men stand up for themselves. He wasn't used to seeing men give instructions. So when he seen the pimping, he was like, wow, who are these guys? I just got to keep it real with you. The pimping was like superheroes to him. You can see that. When he seen them films, when he seen them interviews, he said, I want to be like that. I want to be like that. I want to give instructions like that. I want a woman to honor me, look up to me, adhere to everything that I'm saying and conveying just like him, just like him and them. I want to be like the pimps. I mean, and let's just keep it real. All of these squares really be, you know, giving us praise and worship service behind closed doors. Yeah, that's the truth. Only time they try to down us is when they trying to, uh, you know, campaign at the ladies. But they don't really feel like that. A lot of these guys, you know what I mean, just only be saying things that just catch the eye, you know what I mean, of a gameless bitch. So when the women is speaking down on pimps or, you know, if it's a subject speaking down, of course, they say they best, you know, negative statements about the pimping, but... A lot of these squares don't genuinely feel like that. They want to be like us. They want to be like gods on earth. You know what I mean? Controlling things and running things and having dominion over women and things. They want to be like the pimps. I understand. It's just like when you look at, and not to beat up on them little guys, but when you look at the ain't and the beginner or you look at uh, Alpha Deuteronomy or whatever the fuck he calls himself. You know, look at all of the squares on YouTube. This giving uh, teachings to all of the young guys. But what are they doing? They looking at the pimping. They studying the pimping. They getting game from the pimping. They mimicking us. And then it, they, they convert it and pervert it, you know what I mean, to that, to that square ass shit. But in all, hold on, in all actuality, just to be real with you, all of these motherfuckers is looking up to the pimping. You know what I mean? Whether you women know it or not, even watch the squares. They're like, yeah, applying these pimp principles. Exactly. You got so-called alpha males looking up to who? Applying principles from who? Exactly. Women do not fall for these coogee jackalia, you know what I mean, conscious community uh, mama say, mama sa, mumapu sa ass speeches that these niggas be giving on YouTube to try to sit up there and pander to you. Them niggas be looking up to us too. You know, just keeping that thing. So you can just imagine if we have that effect on black men who are squares, just imagine the effect that we have on little white boys, little white guys. Why you think the police be going so hard on us and things like that? Man, them motherfuckers want to be us, man. And just really jealous on the inside that they just can't be a pimp. You know? So, yeah, I, I, man, I feel for the little boy. He saw the pimping and went crazy. Kind of like when you guys were little boys and you first seen Michael Jackson. That's how he felt when he seen them pimp interviews. I just had a roof over my head and food on my plate. Um, and now my relationship with my family, they know what I'm doing. But I think they probably just don't really, they try and look the other way about it, you know? Like when the cops came and served that search warrant the other day, they were they were on my ass about it, but I kind of like, you know, calmed them down, cooled them about it and told them like, yo, this is what's going on. Man, don't say no, I guess. I know. 
Even in y'all music and everything, if you look around, you guys took from pimp culture. Every I can man, listen, don't I'm gonna leave it alone because I'll turn the video into something else. But man, I could you motherfuckers been mimicking and trying to copy this pimping man from ancient times to recent times. You guys really want to be pimps. Just be, I'm just keeping it real. But go ahead and save face and say a few little things in the comment section so you can act like you're your own man and all that old goofy shit. But I know you really just be idolizing this pimping. Just like, you know what I mean, in the lifestyle, you know, you got guys that be hating on me. Why? Because they can't be me. It'd be like, God, why I couldn't be sinful to pee? And God respond back, it's because you wasn't worthy to be sinful to pee. I blessed him to be sinful to pee because he was worthy. I chose him to be sin sinful to pee. But I know a lot of y'all be having private conversations with God, you know, asking God why I couldn't be sinful to pee. Why I couldn't be tall. Why I couldn't be handsome. Why I couldn't have two dimples. Why I couldn't be funny as hell. Why I couldn't be sharp. Why I couldn't be the pimping guy. And you just be crying in your car. I know. I know. Now you're trying to sit up there and act like you're going to be crying when you by yourself because you couldn't be this pimping. You know what I mean? But it's okay. Go ahead and say whatever you want to say in the comment section, but I know your heart. You really want to be this pimping. I'm like, I'm sorry I didn't come out and tell you guys straightforward. I kind of was under the assumption that they knew. And Ashley, how about your uh, your family? You, you still speak to them? Um, not really at the moment. Or I'm trying to distance myself from them. Um, they, my parents never did anything to harm me physically or anything like that. But mentally and emotionally, um, they weren't really there. Obviously, my dad um, haven't seen him since I was really little. So um, we've only had a little bit of communication for a couple of years. And we're both kind of ghosters, I would say. Ghosters. Hard for us to like keep that communication flowing. Um, so it's not really bothersome to me anymore as much like it was, but, uh, yeah, I always felt kind of like I was trapped. Um, yeah, no, I feel that Living sure. with them, yeah, or with my mom, per se. Um, and my stepdad, I'm not fond of him really at all, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I always wanted to leave. Ever since I was really, really little, my mom would always complain because I'd be... I just got to be real. They real and they young too, so I wouldn't give up on them. I'm going to be real with you. The young, the young sinful to pee, I would have been hanging around uh, Kelby. I would have convinced him that he was the pimping. Yeah, that young sinful to pee before getting locked up, oh man, I would have dirty macked him so cold. <laughs> He would have, he would have got his sock. He would have got knocked, man. It wouldn't even been funny. I wouldn't have came like the rest of you peas. Oh, you ain't this, you ain't that. You know what I mean? You should keep this out. I'm only doing it because now we on YouTube and I'm in another country and shit like that. And I didn't change. But the young sinful to pee, man, please. I would have been man telling him, man, he he got the potential to be one of the coldest. And I would have named him another name. He would have been begging. He would have been, man, he would have been coming around us every day, man. It was only going to be sooner or later before he sit up there and get knocked for both of them bitches, man. Because I don't, you know, they doing that shit, but they not at the point where they can't, you know, get off of it. And trust me, I've dealt with somebody that was fucking with the crystal meth. They got to have a sincere desire to leave that shit alone. I always tell people, you can preach at her, you can teach at her, you can pimp at her mind, but a bitch got to have a sincere desire to leave them drugs alone. And if I found out that, you know what I mean, of course she got a sincere desire to leave that shit alone, shit, I'm going to fuck with the bitch. Yeah, unlike some, I done had a few bitches that genuinely wanted to be off that shit. And I ain't going to lie, you know what I'm saying? The one that really stick out, I'm going to bring home here one day, you know, really was desire. Things didn't go left and she ain't backslide and subside until I went to prison. You know what I mean? When I went to prison, man, you know, 
that spirit of depression, that's the worst thing that can happen to somebody that used to be on them drugs. When that spirit of depression come in, and, you know, especially if they ain't got that man around, you know what I mean, to put that discipline, yeah, they're going to 9 out of 10, they're going to backslide and subside back to it, man. That depression going to lead to transgression, you know? So it is what it is on that. But, yeah, I definitely think that, uh, you know, man, it ain't too late. Hold on. I don't think it's too late around here. I know y'all done gave up, but, man, I don't think it's too late. And I definitely would have been hanging around with him. Especially if he had, uh, like, come on, P. P, what's, what you need? I don't even smoke weed. But I would have sat up there and bought him all the weed that he needed. All of that shit. Come on, man. Hey, Freeze. Hey, P. Hey, hey, Trump. Hey, man, meet my young P partner, man. Larry Bird the Great. <laughs> or White Privilege the P, man. Yeah, man, this white privilege to pee, man, out that Orange County, man. You know? <laughs> oh, he would have went. He would have went. You know? Like, yeah, man, you know what I mean? At first, I was like, ah, but after I started listening to him, man, yeah, he's some real pimping. And from that day on, man, he would have definitely been around me, man. Them two little bitches would have been knocked. Only kid that would cry to get picked up from school because I didn't want to go home. Um, yeah, so we got in a last final argument out of all the millions and millions of arguments that we've had that go nowhere because Not there's millions. that emotional disconnect where she just can't understand anything that I'm trying to tell her. So um, she kind of gave me the go ahead and I um, packed my stuff and I hopped out the window that night and I left. They give it an inch, you take a mile for sure. I mean, it's much better, I think, to be out on. Uh, Y'all laughing, but I just seen a cold vision, man. A cold vision. Like I said, that young sinful to pee would have been giving him the call, man, while we jumped on the motherfucking highway. I would have had that Mac Dre just put, I'm going to miss you in the morning. You know what I mean? Hello, I'll be back. I'll be back. I, I'm going to miss you in the morning. I would have, man, I'm telling you, would have been on the highway, man. Like, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? What's going on with you? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know, man. You know what I mean? The reason why they ain't been answering that phone. <laughs> I just had a cold vision, man. I'm sorry. He would have been not. Um, Them bitches would have been down and about it. Because, like, we are young, but we're adults. And just living with our families, especially the types of families we had, was so controlling. And so it was just preventing us from doing anything that we needed to progress in our lives. So I think us finding each other through fate or through God, whatever you want to you know, say how we found each other, it was a beneficial thing. We're all friends. We're close. We love each other. And we're kind of just able to you know, progress together rather than just before it was kind of me progressing alone and you know, having girls and dropping them for new ones and things like that. But when we found the two, when I found the two of them and they found me, um, we really just grew and we made a real connection that I've never had before with other girls. Mm. What would you wish your family? Y'all doing drugs, but you keep using this word love, man. Ain't no love in that. That ain't nothing but death. Ain't no love in that death thing, man. Y'all doing drugs with each other, man. Please stop saying love, pimp. You just, man, this is blasphemy. Come on. Would have done differently. Um, For me personally, I don't wish they would have done anything different. I think the way that they raised me, built me into the person I am today, it definitely built my character, gave me a good mind. You don't have no character. You acting like somebody that you're not. That's not character, sir. That's fraudulent. And kind of just look at the world a different way. So I wouldn't say nothing. I think what they did even. And see, even the bitch know. Hold on. Let's go back. You just got to look at the, the look. Look at the bitch. I mean, would have done differently. Um, For me personally, I don't wish they would have done anything different. I think the way that they raised me, built me into the person I am today, it definitely built my character gave me a good mind and kind of just look. Bitch just looking off to the side like, 
Damn, you know, I wish I wasn't on these drugs. Damn, I wish I could just run into, you know, a beautiful pimp. You know what I mean? An authentic pimp that's willing to do some pimping on me. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of this shit. You know, she just got, you know what I mean? While he just talking, the bitch just looking to the side like, it got to be more to life to this. You know, and baby, it is. You know, I'm just telling you, man. But, hey, I told you, I'm speaking by faith. She gonna, Ashley going to run into a cold pimp one day. You know what I mean? Hopefully, man, she'll have her mind made up. And her heart right, ready to leave them drugs alone. But I'm speaking by faith. A different way. So I wouldn't say nothing. I think what they did, even though it was harsh and, you know, abusive, I wouldn't change it for the world. Crystal, what would you say about, about your family? Are you still in contact with them? Um, oh, I had you fucked up, baby. Your name now, your name Crystal. Okay, the Crystal bitch. You know what I mean? Damn, that's fucked up. Crystal messing with Crystal Mel. Damn, that's fucked up. Come on. A little bit. Uh, they don't really like to talk to me. Um, so it's usually like they won't, won't speak to me for a few months and I'll try and reach out um, through multiple phones because they block every number that I text them. Um, but I'm not really sure. Our relationship me with my parents is always on and off. It's... Um, It'll be really bad for a few months, and then it'll be okay. And then it'll be really bad, and then it'll be okay. What do you, what do you wish they had done differently? I, I wish that they just spoke to me when I was when I was growing up with them. Uh, it's kind of they would see me struggling, and uh, they didn't want to deal with it themselves. So they would put me in like a place where um, I could get professional help, I guess. Rehabs and stuff, right? Yeah, I just wish they would have talked to me and tried to just be there. Honestly, yeah. I guess if yeah, if I had one thing about my family, I'm sure we all kind of wish that our family would had just been there more, the three of us. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have somebody to count on, you're gonna go look for that type of love somewhere else. And I think that's what we ended up, you know, finding, not necessarily looking for it, but just kind of finding with each other. Yeah, I can really see it now, man. Like, if a preacher or a minister was to, like, talk to them, I could see all three of them just crying, man. Seriously, I could, I could just see it. You know, three little kids, man. They're three little babies, man. I could see them right now on TBN. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. Right now, we have Brother Kiwi, you know what I mean, along with... Sister Crystal and Sister Ashley, amen. You may know them from Soft White Underbelly. You know, Brother Kiwi, he was a pimp at that time. You know, Kelby, he was doing his thing. He was in Orange County, you know, trying to pimp. But amen, this man is get young man is giving his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to testify right now. Go ahead. They just get up there. I want to just thank God. You know, the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. And be old things, all things are new. You know, I was deceived. The devil had me bound. He really had me delusional. I thought that I was a pimp. I thought I was out there, you know, pimping. But the Lord Jesus Christ came into my life. And amen, I'm not pimping. And this young girl that used to be my prostitute, I stand before you today. She's my wife. She's my wife and she's, got, she's pregnant right now with my third child. Stand up, babies. Then the two babies going to stand up with them. He's like, oh, my God, that's a blessing. And what happened to the other sister? Oh, she's married to my friend. Hey, man, we're just ministers in the Lord. I could, I could see it. You know what I mean? I could just see it. Then I, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Come on. Hallelujah. No, that, that white, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I can see it. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, God. I was out there, Lord. The feds, I remember a time when the feds had took 20000 from me. Praise God. And they had took 20000 from us at the time we were homeless. Oh, bless your name, El Shaddai. I'm telling you, man, I can see it. I can see it. He needs to go in that route. That's the money on that route. Prosperity in that route. 
it's the correctional facility in this round that he's going in. Is that love that we never really had from our families. And that connection, that bond is, it's something real. You know, just because we're not blood related doesn't mean that we don't have that, that same care and passion for each other. That passion. That our family should have had for us. For sure. What would you guys say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, in your 19, 18 years? Honestly, most important lesson I've learned in my life, um, it's not advice that I'm gonna take myself, never have, never will, but really just focus on the things that society tells you to do in terms of jobs and careers, because you don't wanna be, you know, walking outside to have a smoke and, you know, getting put in cuffs, cops drawing guns on you, undercover agents and shit, and then running in your house, trashing your place, just looking for shit, you know, looking for, taking all your property, you don't want that. So I would say, you know, stay in school. Definitely just, even if your family doesn't love you, love them, you know, and that goes for anybody. If they don't love you, try and love them because you can't fight hate with hate. You can only fight hate with love. Hell no, nah. let me go back. What? Hate with love. Give me a second, hold on. He dropped the code, Dr. Martin Luther King speech. Hold on. What'd you say, Brother Kelby? Um, follow all those rules and you should have a pretty decent life, no matter what your upbringing is. Praise him. All right. Ashley, Crystal, and Kelby, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Yeah, thank you. Hold on, damn, I fucked up. That man said, hold on, cause I, it, it, <sighs> hold on, God damn. You know, Sam don't be knowing what he's doing with this computer. I don't know where I've rewinded it. The man said, hold on. Because you, you can't fight hate with hate. You got to fight hate with love. Hold on. Y'all was supposed to make sure you understand me. The thing is on. Hold on. Hold on. Right. We are the world speech. He was coming with the we are the world speech. I was trying to hear it again. Fuck it. Hold on. You guys the best of luck. Be careful out there. Hold on. The man said that was further confirmation that he's been listening to nothing but black men. He's been studying us. Not just the pimping, mainly the pimping, but that last little line yeah, man, he came with the Dr. Martha. Luke. You can't fight hate with hate. You know, so I know that's what he's spitting to them bitches. You know what I mean? He's giving them the Frankly Beverly and May speech, we are one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I knew just with that last speech that he just gave, I'm like, wait a minute, goddamn. This nigga that sat up there, you understand me, and took everything from the black man. God, God damn, boy. You know what I mean? Not only been listening to the pimpin', he been listening to Dr. Goddamn. I already know when them bitches get into an argument, that's the first thing that he used. You know what I mean? Listen, you can't fight hate with hate. You can't fight fag with fag. You can only fight hate and fag with love. You know, that one thing that boy do, he using that love word. You know what I mean? That love word fluently coming out of his mouth, man. Hold on, let me see. Let me see, 633. Mm. Mm, yeah, I'll speak on this for like a minute or two. And uh, we up, since we up early, shit, I might as well go ahead and do another live. It's so much to talk about, man. God damn. Your boy, your boy Whitehead uh, choking bitches inside his church. Man, it's all type of shit to talk about. But anyway, uh, again, this is because of bad representation. This is because of no representation. Uh, this is because of con males getting on soft white underbelly, professing to be pimps. And by Mark enabling everybody to just talk about the game, you know, every lame, every square, every homeless person, every handicapped individual, you have individuals of all different walks of life now think that they could be pimps 
because they see all the suckers, all the ho, all the ho trusters, all the busters. They see all of these goofies getting on soft white underbelly professing to be a pimp. And so once you see the garbage man, the tool man, the man that's on meth, the man that looks like nothing is left, you got every man from all walks of life getting on this platform professing to be a pimp. What do you think young guys is going to say? Hey, I, I could do this. If that stupid motherfucker can do it, if this stupid motherfucker, if that motherfucker with no teeth can do it, if this dude with dookie and, and dirt under his fingernails can do it, hell yeah, I, I, I think I could be a pimp. So I can't really, you know, blame the guy. You know what I mean? Because y'all done allowed everybody and their mama to get on soft white underbelly. You know, I'm talking about motherfuckers get fresh out of the garbage can. Motherfuckers be climbing straight out the sewer. Be like Mark be like, hey, hey, you, they just get out the sewer. You want to interview as a pimp? Uh, I don't know nothing about it. It's cool. Most people don't. Sure. Come on. That's how it is. Real talk. Hold on. That's exactly how it is. Motherfuckers be climbing out the garbage can to do pimp interviews on Soft White Underbelly, man. But look, I'm going to do a live. Give me, give me about 15 minutes, man. 15, 20 minutes. We'll be probably live about something else. You know what I mean? But I uh, love you guys. I hope you live as long as you want. Never want as long as you live. Make sure, man, you get up in the uh, comment section. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, give your opinion, man, about the... Uh, you know, anything I said or anything he said, anything pertaining to the topic, but definitely get the likes up and make sure you click on the subscribe and the bell button, you know, as we get out of here, man. I love you guys. Hope you live as long as you want. Never want as long as you live. See y'all in about a good 900 seconds. We out of here.